to the Lord. Hallelujah. A pleasant good evening to you and greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What a privilege and an honor it is again for us to connect because we have committed this time so that we can commune with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The Bible reminds us that in the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy and at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Why not take the time out to invite a friend, you know, your, your, your home as a family. Yes, the Lord is with you. Where two or three are gathered together in his name, give him the praise, the glory, and the honor. So Father, we bless you, and we adore you, and we magnify you, and we glorify you, for you are great, and greatly to be praised. Father, we thank you for life. Oh God, we thank you that we're still here. We thank you that we're in the land of the living. Oh Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your holy name for you are great and greatly to be praised. Oh Father, and Lord, we are asking that whatever we do, oh God, today in this time together, Lord, that your spirit and your power will minister to hearts and lives wherever they may be at this time. Wherever we are connected, Lord, hallelujah. We bless you and praise you for your precious word, which will come a little later. It shall not return unto your void, but it shall accomplish that which you please, and it shall prosper in the thing for wherein you send it. Thank you for the prosperity of your word, for healing, for deliverance, for salvation. Oh God, in the name of Jesus the Christ, we bless you and we adore you, Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 149, praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of his saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in the king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment written, this honor, have all his saints praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the wonderful name of the Lord. We are binding the forces of hell. Satan we will not remain. The church is alive doing well. Pulling down the struggles of hell. We are fighting the forces of hell. Satan, when we will not, they will not be there. The is alive, you will win. Pulling down the struggles of hell. We are fighting the forces of hell. They will not be there. The church is alive to expand. Pulling down the stars of the We are fighting the forces of 
We are empowered by His Spirit. Hallelujah. Through Jesus Christ, we are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. Praise God. And the enemy, he belongs, he and his works, he and his uh, demons, they belong under our feet. But we've got to know who we are. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Blessed be the wonderful name of the Lord. For those of you who are just joining us, thank you and welcome. We are pleased to be able to share the word of God with you, to pray with you and for you, and to send, the, 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 as it were, the anointing of God into your homes. Yes, bringing about peace and joy and satisfaction deliverance and salvation blessed be his wonderful name i want to give you some numbers so that you can call even while we are on the air as it were live you know so that you can connect you need special prayer certainly you are free to call any one of these numbers and their intercessors there who will be happy to counsel you and to pray with you. And these numbers are 491 2471 642 5950 772 7123. The numbers again are 491 2471 642 5950 772 71 Two, three. If you're calling from outside of Trinidad and Tobago, you need to include the country code, which is 868. With some of you, it might be 1868. To some of you, it might be 
868 but you will be able to connect with us as you call we bless the name of the lord for his faithfulness towards us we want you to like the page we want you to share it we want you to subscribe to it and of course comment please place your comment comments we would be happy to respond to the best of our ability blessed be by the help of god of course blessed be the wonderful name of the lord well the privilege and the honor is mine at this time uh, uh to invite to share with us again on the church of jesus christ this church that is triumphant this church that is alive and well that's right we praise be unto god help me welcome at this time none other than minister shirley Pope. <laughs> hallelujah praise be unto god thank you jesus Hey, praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Pope. Good evening, yes. everyone. I want to say thanks be to God yes. for his goodness towards us yes. as we continue to look into his word. Amen. Let me say hello and greetings to my scribes, headed up by Sister Albert uh, Alexander. You've done a great job over the months, and I want to just shout you out today by putting out the references as I speak, you would let the people know exactly where the verses are. So I thank you, thank the intercessors, thank the viewing and listening audience, both local, regional, and international. And for the semi-family, thank you so, so very much. We are going to continue on the church. This church is building a long time. <laughs> it's building a long time, but Somebody said, I don't know who it is, the old saying, hurry birds don't build good nests. It's taken a long time because it's a solid, solid, solid building. So I'm reading today from the text, the foundation text, Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18. And I'm reading from the voice translation today. Matthew 16, 18 from the voice translation. And it reads like this. This is why I called you Peter. For on this rock I will build my church. The church will reign triumphant even at the gates of hell. Mm -hmm. And there is a footnote in this translation that I'm going to read because it's going to clear up any misconception that one may have. And the footnote reads like this the voice translation, with Peter's confession that Jesus is the anointed one, the foundation of the church is laid. Amen. So that settles a lot. Let me read it again. This is why I called you Peter, for on this rock I will build my church. The church will reign triumphant even at the gates of hell. And the footnote reads, with Peter's confession that Jesus is the anointed one, the foundation of the church is laid. So the church is not built on Peter, but on the confession that Jesus Christ is the Lord, the Son of the living God. So Father, we thank you for your word today. Yes. We pray for clarity of thought. We pray for understanding. We pray for wisdom. We pray, God, that you are going to give enlightenment and revelation as we study your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, we continue. The church. We have covered the formulation, the foundation, the formation, and the function. Today, we are going to be looking again at the foes of the church, but we are going to be closing off the foes tonight. Last week, we looked at the gates of hell and how those gates try to oppose the church when they function as the gates they are. They do what gates are meant 
to do. They threaten our entry points into the presence of God. They threaten our protection. They threaten our, us on our legal fronts. And they also threaten our influence. However, we are assured by Jesus that the church that he is building on himself, being the chief cornerstone, shall not be overcome by evil, because the gates of hell shall not prevail against his church. Amen? Tonight, we continue on the foes of the church. As we look further into the ways the devil comes against the church, he uses different weapons to attack us. So I'm going to be giving you, let me see if I can tell you up front how many. I'm going to be giving you five weapons that the devil uses against the church. Weapon number one, national restrictions. Now there are countries where Christianity is illegal. They forbid the people of the nation to worship God. These restricted areas literally persecute Christians, so they are enemies of the church. However, even within such restrictions, the church is alive. Amen. Let me say that again. Even within such restrictions, the church is alive. Why? Amen. Because the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Not even legislations can prevail against the church. Amen. The second weapon that the enemy uses is religion. Now I have to define religion. Miriam Webster's dictionary defines religion as an organized system of beliefs, ceremonies, and rules used to worship a god or a group of gods. But there is another definition that I can identify with. It is E. Stanley Jones' excerpt from Warren W. Weisberg's book. The book name is With the Word. And his definition of religion is man's search for God. Religion is man's search for God. The gospel is God's search for man. So, everybody in their religion, whatever they believe, whatever they practice, is literally their search to connect with whom they perceive to be God. So that's religion. But there are two things that amaze me about religion. Two things. One, how could all religions have the same aim that is to connect with our God doing things so differently. And the second thing that amazes me is how religion can use the same Bible to divide the church. According to Don Vaughan, 2021, in his article written for the Britannica Encyclopedia, the world's primary religion, I'm giving you a background now, falls into two major categories the Abrahamic religions, such as Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Now, all these three religions use some form of the Bible as their base or their foundation. And the Indian religions, which include Hinduism, Buddhism, and Sikhism, and many others. In fact, interestingly, listen to this. According to the World Population Review 2021, one popular estimate claims that there are some 4,000 to 4,300 religious groups worldwide. Religion, 4,000 to 4,300 religious groups worldwide. No wonder there is confusion even more confusion arises when within the Christian community some say Holy Ghost some say Saturday some say music some say sanctimonious some say dance and the list goes on religion even tried to hinder Jesus 
from fulfilling his ministry while in the earth. How did they do that? Let's get back to the Bible. The Pharisees in Mark chapter 3 from verse 1 to 6. He entered again into their synagogue. Mark chapter 3, 1 to 6. And there was a man there that had a withered hand. Now Jesus is always about healing and doing good and performing miracles. But it was the Sabbath day. And they sought to see why, if, they, if he would heal so that they could accuse him. And he said unto the man with the withered hand to stand up. And he said unto him, Is it lawful? He looked around and he said, Is it lawful that we should do good on the Sabbath day or to do evil? Now, Jesus is a wise teacher. He knew that the Pharisees would have a problem with this. So he's taken it from a, a, a kind of a way, a technical way then. He didn't just come and say, it, I can do good on the Sabbath. So he asked the question, is it good? Is it good to save lives or to kill? And they knew the answer would be, it would be good and it's better to save lives. What did they do? They held their peace. Because the hypocrisies in their hearts, the religious leaders' hearts, would not allow them to speak the truth. And when he looked around about him with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he said unto the man, stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored as the other. And here it is now. And the Pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel with the Herodians against him, how they might destroy him. Religion trying to destroy the church. And then in Mark chapter 11 from 27 to 33, Mark, 20, Mark 11, 27 to 33, the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders, they too tried to destroy the church. They came again to Jerusalem as he was walking into the temple. And they came unto him, the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders, and they say unto him, By what authority dost thou do these things? And he gave, and who gave thee this authority to do these things? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I will also ask you one question. And every time I read this, I laugh at how Jesus operates. And I want you to answer me. I will not tell you by what authority I do these things. But let me ask you this question. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? Answer me. And they reasoned with themselves. If we say it's from heaven, he will say, then why don't you believe? But if we say it's of men, they fear that the people would mock at them or scorn them because they had, a, they had John held up as a prophet. So they told Jesus, we cannot tell you well, Jesus said, well, I can't tell you either, you know. If you don't know if the baptism is of John or from heaven, well, I can't tell you either. So he just actually hit them a rhetorical question, and then he just come and slap them back with their own answer and left them like that. So even the, the leaders, the very religious leaders, the religions of the world try to oppose the church. Jesus came for a purpose, and he must fulfill his purpose. They did not and could not overcome him, and so even now, they still cannot overcome the church. Thirdly, the third four of the church, each other. I'm so sorry to tell us, each other. We are supposed to be, according to Galatians 5, 14 and 15, for this is the law. The law is fulfilled in one word, even in this word. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that he be not consumed of one another. So sometimes we are our worst enemy towards each other. We bite and devour each other as though we do not know each other. You do you know? Most of the times that something happens in the church, I'm not condoning sin. We are the ones who take it out there to the unsaved world to make a mockery of the church. We bite and devour each other. That's what we do. 
but verse 13 tells us that we ought to love by love serve one another Proverbs 6 16 to 19 tells us about six things that God's God hates and the six things are an, a, 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 a proud look a lying tongue hands that shed innocent blood heart that divides wicked imaginations feet that swift to run into mischief a false witness and he that speaketh lies but the seventh he that sweat discord among the brethren so let not the seventh be you because the bible says the seventh is an abomination to the lord so we are supposed to be protecting each other and not sowing discord among ourselves ourselves we ourselves are our own enemy when we behave like that number four church church hurts and i deliberately wrote this church hurts because now we we have this term church hurts as though it is something new church hurts and because the church hurts us we are not going back to church well the problem with church hurts is that if you are hurt by the church and you feel like you don't um, want to forgive, the problem really lies with you. Not willing to forgive is not a sign or a fruit of the Spirit of God. This is a real active foe in the church. And I want to send a word of caution. If we are not willing to forgive our brother or our sister who has offended us, neither will our Heavenly Father forgive us. Amen. Church hurts. If we are not willing to forgive a brother or a sister who has offended us, neither will our Heavenly Father forgive us according to Matthew 6 and verse 15. We have not yet seen church hurts, eh? We have not. Do you think that the pastors and the leaders who stand before you daily never have church hurts? But we've got to go beyond that. We've got to forgive and we've got to move on. In Acts chapter 15, I want us to, maybe you can do this for your homework. Just read the whole chapter. I'm going to be giving synopsis because I don't want to keep you just reading that whole thing. But in Acts chapter 15 verse 2, when therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and dispute, and I have this in capitals, no small dissension and disputations with, it, with them. What does that mean? They had a quarrel. They fall out. They had no small, and not a small thing, you know. They had a big basa basa according to the Trinis. No small dissension and disputation with them. They determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain others of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. Then in verse 7 again, and when they had been much disputing, so it continues, and then between verse 36 and 39, some days after Paul said to Barnabas, let us go again and visit the brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do and Barnabas determined to take with them John whose surname was Mark but Paul thought not good to take with him to take John Mark with them who departed from them in Pamphylia and went not with them to work so church hurts Paul is offended because John Mark had left them he didn't want he didn't go through the grind Everybody is just acting differently on this mission. And the, 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 the contention was so sharp. The contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. You talking about church hurts? So Barnabas said, okay, I will take my... And he sailed to Cyprus. Now... Paul is in prison in Rome and he is about to be executed so he writes to Timothy 
in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 11. And he says, only Luke is with me. Take Mark, the same John Mark, and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for ministry. So we should not allow church hurts to bring us to the point that we cannot be reconciled. Here Paul is asking for the same John Mark. Though Paul was hurt and disappointed with John Mark, we must not allow the foe to overcome us. Jesus is building his church and he has given us what it takes to deal with the church hurts. Because you see, we are different people. We have different perception about things. And as close as our teeth and our tongues are in our mouths, sometimes the teeth bites the tongue and immediately it still has to come and suck up if you have a little blood. It has to work together. Every time you have a dispute, a dispute with your children or your family member, you don't leave them. You don't do that. So if you have to leave them every time, every day you're leaving. Because every day something's going to happen. You understand? So we have to learn to rise up. The devil has some people bound in church, church hurts for years. And he's not releasing you because you don't want to be released. You feel pity, not me and them. That is their thing. Listen, I want to ask you today. Because if we do not forgive our fellow, God will not forgive us. Please release yourself. Paul released himself. Paul asked for John Mark to come. Yeah. Then fifthly, the other four of the church, and this is a big one, the word. The word. The word. The Bible tells us in James chapter 4 and verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God? We cannot be friends of the world and friends of God. We cannot be friends of the kingdom of darkness and a friend of the kingdom of light. We cannot be of the world and of the church. Whosoever therefore is a friend of the world is the enemy of God. That's the verse. And then in 1 John chapter 2 verse 15 and 16, the Bible implores us, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. Could you see this as an enemy of the church, the lust of the flesh? We go to church, where is our mind? Think about it. The lust of the eyes. What are you longing after? And the pride of life. This is not of the Father, but of the world. That's a whole message right there. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Back in, in, in Genesis, what happened to Eve? She was in the, listen, Eve was in paradise. Paradise in the midst of the garden when God will come down and have church with them. But the lust of the flesh, because she was listening to the devil, and the lust of the eye, all of a sudden the fruit looks like something that cannot be resisted. How many times we have found ourselves in the church being led to the point of can't resist illicit sex, can't resist places that doesn't bring glory to God, can't resist. Hear me. This ought not to be. And the pride of life. Well, you know the devil is a prideful fellow. Pride is what took him out of heaven. So he brings that, oh, you would be like God. And she yielded to both, to three, sorry, not, not both, to the lust of the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. She yielded to that. It is not of the Father, but of the world. The world is fast becoming a part of the church culture. God help us. The church is grappling between what is right and what is wrong. We know, yeah? 
but we want to fit into the world so much that we do not want to be distinct about saying that if we are going this way, this is the right way, the broad way it leads to destruction, the narrow way leads to life. We're not making that, that cut on here anymore. We tell you things like, there are many ways you don't have to, and you don't have to. Listen to me. While there are things that may divide us, there is one thing that unifies us, and that's the blood of Jesus Christ. That unifies us. So when we have applied that blood, we must now walk according to his word. So the dichotomy is clear. We cannot say it's okay. We have to love everybody, but we cannot condone behaviors that don't bring glory to God. We have to let you know this is ungodly. So the world is fast becoming part of the church culture, and we've got to watch that. We must guard against that because the word of God is still our standard for holiness. Amen. It is still. So let me give you them again. Major, major church foes. One major church foe is restricted areas. We really cannot do much about it, but pray about those restricted areas. They are called the 1040 window, and there are areas. We've heard recently of another area where the Christians were being persecuted. And we don't want to take it for granted because we are living free, but that's a gate against the church. We do not want to take it for granted. The restricted areas. There are nations that have the law that they cannot worship as freely as we do. Then religion. And when I say religion, I went into showing you there are so many religions of the world. And some of them are diametrically opposed to the word of God. But they are religions. They are churches. They, don't, they may not call their gathering church. But that's who they are. They are a religion. They look to a higher power. And then we have ourselves, each other, a folk of the church. I am so sad about this. Listen, you want us to fix this? Let's fix it. We are supposed to be our brother's keeper. We are supposed, our love is supposed to cover a multitude of sin. Not to expose the brother and throw his linen for everybody to talk about it. We need to deal with it, but we need to cover the brother. Cover the sister. You know how many times things would come to us, what do you do? You, you try to correct, you try to, to nurture, you try to move, let's move up. You could get up from this. All of us would have fallen at some point in our lives. All of us, as good and as pretty as you may look now, you were not always so well put together. There were times when you were messy. And I always refer to it as when you're making bread, for those of you who ever make bread. When you're making bread and you put your flour and your yeast and your shortening and your milk and whatever else you put in your bread and your, 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 your wheat and so on, whatever you put in your bread, that when you put that liquid, your water, your hand dirty all over and it's sticky but as you continue every piece of flour is now into a smooth and nice dough nothing sticks anymore why because you have worked with it let's work with each other none of us came out like a well-baked bread there were times when we were going through and we were being refined each other. We must look for each other. We must work with each other. We must look over each other and protect each other. We must not be each other's enemy. We must not be a foe of the church that we say we belong to. What are we doing? Any building that is divided against itself, the Bible says it cannot stand. So we must be together. Then church hurts. Well, I went into detail with that. We must forgive each other so that we can be free to function in the church of Jesus Christ. Don't be silent because somebody said something a long time ago. The person who said that might have even died and you're still holding on to that. Release yourself. Get on, listen, get up and say, I want to try again. I was wrong. I know I hurt you, I was wrong. Some of us too big people would have left us separated, moved on, and you never apologized. 
It's still on your chest. Get rid of it. I'm saying to you, it still bothers you. If it's still bothering you, it's because it's an issue. Deal with it. That's what we need to do. Church hurts. You know, some people are so hurt. Church hurts are so terrible. I remember I was talking to a good friend of mine, not in Trinidad, and I invited him to church. And he said to me, I will never come to your church. I said, why? He said, because the pastor took my brother's wife. I said, okay, I understand how you feel. Now, he's not a member, but he's hurt by the church. I worked with him to the point that he is a member of the same church because you work with people who are in their mess and help them. He, he was not directly, it, it, it affected him. But the point is, what do you do? You do not live there and go to hell. It's possible that you can live there and go to hell. So we must forgive each other. And these things, sorry to say, they will continue to happen. You know why? Because the gates of hell will continue to come up against the church. But we've got to understand that Jesus Christ had made it possible for us to be triumphant all the time. And then the world, not the world we live in like the air we breathe. We have to live here. But the systems of the world and the things we pattern ourselves after, they are the enmity of God, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, the lust of the eyes. What about if we keep our gaze on the Lord? Amen? Now, I have shared these so that we will not be ignorant of the devices of the devil. He's cunning. He is deceptive in the ways he approaches us. So we must be aware of the tactics he uses. Having said that today, next time we come together I will be looking at the future of the church and it's going to be an exciting, exciting exciting set of teaching. However, I want to let you know that for the season, this is going to be our last one for this time, just for the season and when we come back when we come back in the new year we are going to be taking up where we left off and I want to see you there and bring in a friend Continue to like our page, continue to subscribe, continue to pray for us. We need your prayer. But uh, more than anything else today, I want to ask you again, if you are not a part of this church where we love each other, where Jesus Christ has guaranteed us to be victors, today is a good day to surrender to Jesus. Thank you very much. God bless you. School to the past. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We bless the name of the Lord. Yes, you need to be a part of this church. You need to be a part of the church. If you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, this is an opportune time. This is the time. Now is the accepted time. Having heard his voice, do not harden your heart. Maybe your backslider. It is time to come back into the fold. This is where you belong. You need to receive him into your life would you say after me please if you're such a person or persons Lord Jesus I thank you for hearing your word thank you for ministering unto me by your spirit I repent today of my sins forgive me now Come into my life, Lord Jesus, and save me. And I confess you as my Savior and as my Lord. And I believe in my heart that you are alive and alive forevermore. So thank you for saving me now and writing my name in your book of life I give you praise 
Amen. Blessed be the wonderful name of the Lord. Well, we want to take a little time now to intercede for your needs. You know, there's so much needs, there's so much to pray about. That's why Jesus said in Luke 18, 1, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, not to give up, not to give in. So Father, we give you praise, we give you thanks. We continue to bless your holy, precious, and righteous name. Strong and powerful, the Lord is our tower. He gives us the power. He's our refuge and our fortress and our God. In him will we trust. We thank you that we can come boldly. Come and come and keep on coming and keep on asking and keep on seeking and keep on knocking. Lord, I want to thank you for the many who have given their lives to you, yes. surrendered yeah. to your Lordship. Yes. Father, continue to encourage and strengthen yes. and keep. Oh, my Father, I loose upon them your Holy Spirit. Oh, baptize them in the Holy Spirit. Oh, God, fill them to the overflowing. Yes in the name of Jesus the Christ and empower them to do your will. Give them a passion, a hunger for the things of God. Your word declares, blessed are they who do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled. We bless your name, Father. Cover them in the name of Jesus the Christ. Keep them, O oh God, hallelujah, as it were God in your arms, surrounding them and blessing them in the name of Jesus the Christ. We continue to lift up our nations wherever we are in this, in this, at this point in time. We lift up Trinidad and Tobago, oh God, and the many who are calling upon you on the behalf of their nation. There are challenges all over, oh God, all over our world. But we thank you, Lord Jesus. Your word declares that in the world we will have tribulation, but be of good cheer because you have overcome the world. Lord, we bless you tonight for your servant. Oh God, we thank you for the for the, the number of church woes, oh God, and church foes. We thank you, God, religion and church hurts and, and restricted areas and hurting each other and the world. But we thank you. We are overcomers through Jesus Christ in the midst of all that the enemy is seeking to bring against us. The church will stand. The church is alive and well. He is the Alpha, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, the first and the last. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Alive and alive forevermore. We bless your name, Father, that there's coming a day when the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever and for this we bless your name Father that we are on the, we are on the winning side so we continue to lift up our nation to you oh God minister to our leaders endow them empower them enrich them oh God in the name of Jesus the Christ. Our economies, uh, though may be in shambles, Lord, you have promised to supply our every need because you are God and the earth is yours and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. We thank you, Lord, for your promises. They are yea and amen. 
Hallelujah. And as the church of Jesus Christ, we pray for those who are sick in body. It is your will that we prosper and be in health even as the, our souls prosper. Oh, you are the God of our salvation. So we thank you for healing. We thank you for safety. We thank you for preservation. We thank you for soundness, oh God. Hallelujah. To walk in health and wholeness because the very God of peace sanctify us fully. Hallelujah. Thank you for touching our minds. You promised to keep us in perfect peace as we keep our minds stained on you because we trust in you. Oh God, we pray for families who may be hurting at this time. Minister unto them, God, where there be disputation and confusion. Oh God, we thank you for Peace, you are Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. You give peace, oh God, to your people. So minister to hurting families today in the name of Jesus the Christ. Oh my Father, we pray for those who are unemployed. Hallelujah. Father, that you would open doors. You would open doors. You will provide. We thank you. You are our Jehovah Jireh and I send forth the Spirit Spirit of oh God, that people would receive jobs. You will provide. You will provide in the name of Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. We bless you and we thank you because you are the God of abundance. You daily load us, us with benefits and blessings because you are the God of our salvation according to your word Psalm 66 uh, Psalm 68 18 and 19 we praise your father for hearing and answering us for you are great and greatly to be praised we give you thanks because you are good and your mercies endure it forever we thank you for our neighbors oh god our friends oh god for those who do not know you and the family members who are not saved lord save them thank you for the salvation of their souls in the name of jesus the christ we bless your holy name father you are great and greatly to be praised in the name of jesus the christ hallelujah and even as we would come off the air you are free to pray yes let the spirit of god lead you into times of prayer and intercession and petition and thanksgiving we give you glory we give you honor we give you praise in the name of jesus christ hallelujah 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 well we continue to give you these numbers 491-2471 642-5950 and 772-7123 again 491-2471 Six four two five nine five zero seven seven two seven one two three. We bless God for every one of you. We want to let you know, of course, we're coming from the Cure Pentecostal Empowerment Ministries International, and we are located in the heart of Cure Trinidad and Tobago, number twenty seven McDonald Street in Cure, Trinidad and Tobago. And if ever you if you're living outside of Trinidad and Tobago, of course, whenever you come to Trinidad, or when when you come, please, you are free to visit us. And let me know. Let us know what is happening. We bless God. Of course we are open. The offices are open Monday to Friday from 8 a.m to 4 p.m. And of course, you want to call our local numbers. They are 662-4047 or 663-9221. Maybe you want to drop dropping a hamper and we continue to assist people coming off the streets because of 
where we are located yes this is what we do not because of COVID-19 we've been doing this long before we continue to do it and we want to thank you for your ongoing support of course we are on I-95.5 every Thursday morning 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. We would want you to connect with us. And every Sunday morning we are on television, CCN TV6 from 8 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. We bless the Lord for his ongoing, ongoing support. We want to thank the many of you who continue to support us in this venture yes the ministry you're sowing into good soil please you want to make a contribution you can call any of the numbers that i gave to you and they will be happy to connect with you you are in trinidad you can go to any republic bank let me give you a number or you can go online or to any republic bank let them know you've come to make a contribution you come to give something so that we can continue to advance the kingdom of god the account number is three five zero one zero one six eight three three zero one let me give you that number again it's very important because god is going to move upon your heart i know this yes by his spirit and you want to give make a contribution this is very very important as we continue to advance the kingdom of god that account number again is three five zero one zero one six eight three three zero one no matter how small it is we appreciate it very much the lord richly bless you and your household especially at this time the bible tells us as we give it shall be given unto us and god will supply our every need according to philippians chapter 4 and verse 19 and luke chapter 6 and verse number 38 well again remember uh next week we are on that special time of prayer we come back for 6 30 next tuesday evening but it will be a time of prayer and intercession we're talking about uh we'll be on this subject of war on covid 19 war on covid 19 and we heard about the fact of the strongholds but thanks be unto god we are more than conquerors through our lord jesus christ so until we meet again remember we are not going under we have the victory why because jesus christ is lord to the glory of god the father stay blessed and stay safe amen and amen